when you talk about the National Security Office uh, exercising uh, governing power in relation to criminal cases under the national security law, you're talking about extremely rare circumstances, which nobody would like to see uh, happening. Uh, it's only in relation to those rare circumstances that the National Security Office would take upon itself to prosecute a case under the national security law. Now, uh, those uh, circumstances are, again, uh, very clearly spelled out in the law. Uh, it refers to, first of all, uh, if there is a case which is complex due to the invol involvement of a foreign country, which makes it difficult for the SAR government to exercise jurisdiction. In, in other words, that if you have a case which involves foreign relations, involving a foreign power, political power, um, and makes it difficult for the SAR government to exercise jurisdiction, and we all know under the basic law, foreign relations is not within the internal autonomy of the SAR government, but within the powers of the central government. So that uh, if you have such an exception in the national security law, it is not surprising to see that in such a situation that central government will step in. Now the other two exceptions are where, for example, where there is a serious situation where the SA government is unable to effectively enforce the law. That is a situation, uh, there is no uh, effective governance in Hong Kong, let alone uh, dealing with a specific criminal case. And then obviously the central government will need to, keep, to, 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 to come in and not allow a political vacuum to occur in Hong Kong. The third situation is where there is a major and imminent threat to national security. So you're really, really talking about a major a national crisis. For example, if China were to be at war with another country, and again, in that situation, it is not surprising for the central government to come in.